Welcome, my friend, to this Technical Tuesday, where today we're going to make a chicken stock. We're going to cover in this video the difference between a white stock and a brown stock. We're also going to look at my secret ingredient that adds richness and body to the stock. Probably have never seen this one before. And then also we're going to cover the proper ratio between the amount of bones and the amount of mirepoix, the aromatic vegetables. I'm Chef Lance, a professional chef, baker, and culinary school instructor. And let's cook this thing. All right, let's get started here on making this chicken stock. So what I have in front of me uh, are my chicken scraps, my bones I've collected. Uh, some pieces have a lot of meat on them. Just, just, it, it's just a variety of things, a lot of backs and things like that, that as I, uh, I trimmed chicken off, this is what I ended up and saved and froze. This is my mirepoix, onions, carrots, celery. So let's talk about, oh, and I promised you in the beginning, I was going to show you my secret ingredient. Well, here it is. This is what Tyson calls chicken paws. These are actually chicken feet. And we're going to use those because chicken feet have a lot of cartilage in them. And as that cartilage uh, is in the pot simmering, that breaks down and becomes gelatin and it gives our stock body, makes it actually literally jello-like after it's been in the refrigerator. And uh, it just a nice silky uh, on the mouth. Anyway, it's, it's exciting. Now, what I, I found really cool about finding this is that I don't know when the law changed, but as recently as 2018, it was illegal for chicken producers to sell chicken feet within the United States but yet I still got them. So how do we do that? They had to export them to another country and then re-import them. And so I would go to a local Hispanic or uh, yeah, Spanish, Latin, Latina, Latino grocery store. And I would just, they had chicken feet in their meat counter. And so I would just buy it that way. And I thought at the time it was very ridiculous having to export and import. So now apparently we've gotten over all that nonsense and we, uh, we can get these now. Uh, in the store this I got this in the big box store with the blue yellow vest uh, and it is a uh, it's actually a generic generically labeled but I'm sure it came from one of the Arkansas chicken producers so so I have everything set up but I'm not going to put it in the stock pot just yet so right now I've got my water and my stock pot sitting on the ready what I'm going to do first is because I'm making a roasted chicken stock I'm going to roast these in the oven and that's going to help me uh, get some color on it, develop some flavor. Remember, the Maillard reaction is flavor. So uh, I'm going to do that first. I'm going to go about halfway through the process, about 20 minutes, and I'm going to add my veg, my mirepoix to it, so they get a little color on as well. And then when all that's done, after 40, 45 minutes, I'll check, you know, when it looks good to me, I will pull that out. And then we will take the bones and the mirror pot and put it in the stock pot and get started on that. So with all that said, that's what I'm about to do. Now, let me say this. If you don't want uh, a roasted chicken stock, and that's fine if you don't, uh, there's, we, you can make what's called a white stock. Uh, that is simply using the bones without, the, um, without roasting them. Most people will roast because uh, that's the most common way to do it, uh, to have that kind of a, a dark stock or a roasted stock. But you don't have to. There are some applications where you actually want a white stock uh, instead of the roasted stock. But that's another topic for another day. The process is identical. If you're doing a white stock, just skip the roasting part, okay? You don't, you don't have to do that part. Um, but everything else, once we get in the stock pot, will be identical. All right, my friend, uh, my uh, chicken bones and my mirepoix are out of the oven. Got a nice uh, caramelization on this. Uh, here's some chicken feet. Got a nice caramelization on that. Now, I'm wearing gloves, not because I'm afraid to get my hands uh, with chicken fat and all that because this is not long out of the oven and the gloves help me um, actually withstand the heat. Even though I do have asbestos hands, it does give me a little one up on it. So I'm gonna move all this in here. Whew, and maybe I should have double gloved. 
Bad gum. You can see, probably, I hope you can see, I'll show you, I'll let, tilt it up in a minute, that this has uh, some fond on the bottom, and we're going to capture as much as that as possible. I can't actually put the, normally if I was in a regular kitchen with gas or electric, I would put this pan over heat and deglaze it that way, but it's still hot. I can't do that here, by the way, because I have an induction and this pan is aluminum. Just always start with cold water. Uh, that helps pull some of the proteins out uh, that don't react well when they drop into hot water. Uh, and it'll also help the impurities come out and we will skim those off. So now we've still got a little temperature in this pan. Not a great amount, but a little bit. So I'm going to take my water, put a little water on there. Don't want to be splashing around. But uh, now I want to use that, that temperature difference and scrape as much of that off as I can because that is pure flavor right there. And I want to get as much of that in my stock as I possibly can. The very best I can to get as much of this. Okay, well, I said I wasn't going to make a mess, and there I go. Mother used to call me a bull in the china closet. All right, so now let me get this. Listen, guys, this, does this seem like a lot of trouble? It may be a lot of trouble. I don't know. Not for me. I enjoy it. But the difference in your cooking by doing your own homemade stock is night and day. Night and day. You know, first of all, you don't get all the preservatives. You don't get all the salt in it because we don't add salt when we make stock. We wait until we use it in the final product. And that way it's never over salted. Many times when we're using stock, uh, we're going to reduce it. And when we reduce it, if you've already got salted perfectly, it will become too salty because it'll lose its ratio to salt to uh, water. Okay, why am I playing with that? All right, so now what I've got to do is I've got to cover this with water. I am going to turn this on high only to bring it to a boil. So let me get some water. I'll be right back. I, I don't want to totally like have a lot of water over the top, but I want to have it submerged and that is submerged so after it comes to a boil i'm going to reduce it to a simmer and this is actually going to simmer for four to six hours all right kids uh, it's been a little more than four hours and the stock is uh pretty pretty finished i could go longer up to six hours but uh, in this case not really need to so what's next is I'm going to strain out the solids. I've got obviously the mirepoix, the vegetables in here, and the bones. Um, and then we're going to strain it. Now, what do I have here? I have a smaller pot because we're going to have a smaller amount because no solids in there. I've got a fine mesh strainer, and then I've got it lined with damp cheesecloth. And if you use cheesecloths like this, you want to uh, dampen it so that uh, well, it just helps it stay in place when you start pouring the liquid in. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to start by ladling this uh, through this, and, and I'm just going to work my way down until I get to the point where I can comfortably pick up this hot pot and pour the rest in. But I'm in no rush to do that right now because the bones, but frankly, would overflow this strainer. And so when we get down a little closer, I'm actually going to pick those out with tongs and put them in my compost bowl. So I'm going to strain the rest of this. And uh, when I come back, I'll show you the beautiful color of this, and we'll go from there. So I'll see you around the corner. Okay, guys, I've uh, strained it, and I've uh, just poured it in this uh, measuring cup just so you can see what it looks like. I literally just poured it, so it's all stirred up. Uh, right here at this level is uh, the four-quart line. We've got a little bit more in here, so it's probably four quarts and a pint. I'm going to guess, so not a bad yield off of the little bit we started with. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pour this back in here. Now, you have to treat this safely. Let me talk a little bit about that. What you have to do is you want to cool this down rapidly. There's this thing called the temperature danger zone. Anything above 40 degrees and at up to 140 degrees, some say 135, but 140 is a, uh, a good safe area. That is the temperature danger zone in which bacteria can multiply exponentially. 
And so we, that's why we put things in the refrigerator. We want to chill them down or we want to be cooking them and keep them at a higher temp to kill off those bacteria. So what we're going to do with this, I'm going to stick this in an ice bath. Now, how am I going to do that? Uh, I've got a sink. I'm going to put the, uh, the pot in here with my stock. I'm going to pour ice around it. I'm going to sprinkle salt on the ice like we did with the old fashioned ice cream makers, put a little water on it. And I'm going to come by every so often and stir that because it'll cool the outside, obviously fast, faster. And so uh, the inside is, may still be at a, at a improper temperature. So if I stir it on a frequent basis, the uh, cool will mix in with the warm and, and um, will, everything will cool down uniformly and quickly. Once that happens, I'm going to stick this in my refrigerator with no covering because think of your lid on your pot is like a blanket on your bed. It holds your body heat in. It has no heat of its own. It holds yours in. That lid will hold the heat in this and it won't cool as rapidly as we want it to. So when we come back, it will be uh, have sat in there overnight, cool down. And by the way, you can actually see now it's a little, little uh, creamish looking color, light color. That's the chicken fat rising to the top. All of that will rise to the top in the walk-in or the refrigerator. And uh, as it cools down, it will actually solidify. And so when we come back, I am going to actually take that off of the top. I'm not going to throw that away. That is some good chicken fat. Uh, and you want to use that when you're doing something with chicken. You can use its own fat to cook in to in uh, enhance that chicken flavor. So we'll do that uh, when I come back. It'll be the next day, and we'll get that done, uh, and we'll talk about what to do uh, there. Also, uh, as I close, let me talk about ratio. People say, well, how much mirepoix do you add? Well, there's actually a ratio, uh, and I failed to mention it at the beginning, so let me do it right now. The ratio for uh, making a stock is three to five, three to three parts to five parts bones, to one part mirepoix. So what does that mean? So with chicken, because I want to enhance the chicken flavor, I'm going to move five parts chicken bones to one part mirepoix. That means I'm actually weighing my bones. I do that in grams and then I divide it by five and that's the amount of mirepoix I put in. Remember mirepoix is 50% by weight onion, 25% carrot, 25% celery. So you can figure out real quick how to uh, make that happen. The three part, and you, by the way, it's a preference. This is my preference. I do five parts on chicken bones. I do three parts on beef bones. Beef stock is a lot stronger in flavor. And so I try to balance that out by using a smaller ratio, three parts beef bones to one part mirepoix. You experiment it just in experiment. <laughs> you don't peppermint it, ex experiment with it. You experiment with it and decide what your ratio is, what you like to cook with. But I, for chicken stock, five parts bones, one part mirepoix. So that's that. All right, I'm gonna put this in the refrigerator. Actually, I'm actually gonna put it in the ice bath, then put it in the refrigerator. When I see you again, it's gonna be the next day and we're going to finish this up. All right, see you around the corner. Okay, my friend, I hope you had a great night's rest. Uh, I did. It was a good night's sleep, but it's the next day. And so I have my uh, congealed uh, stock here with a little bit of fat, not as much as I thought there would be, but it's a little bit. And I'm about to skim that off and I'm going to put that into a separate bowl and then I'll ladle out the stock and let you look at it. And it has a, a really nice body to it. So I'm excited about that. So uh, let's get cracking. Okay, let's just start skimming it. Start it right there. And I'm putting this into a stock pot, a uh, small one, um, mainly because I am going to um, render it back down. What I mean by that is, as I get this out of here, I will have a little bit of broth or stock with it. This is not broth, this is stock. And so I want to melt the fat and evaporate off any excess stock I'm going to try to get, by the way, let me change subjects. My goal is to lift off this fat in as big of pieces as possible. Because the smaller it breaks into, the harder it is to get all of it out of the stock. 
So anyway, I'm gonna I'm gonna separate this fat off from the top. And by the way, I don't throw that away. I saved this. This is liquid gold. Let me tell you. So uh, when I come back, I'm going to uh, I'm going to put some of this stock in that uh, pitcher right there. You may see, and um, we're going to take a look at that, and I'll show you the body that this has. You may be able to tell now that it's jiggling. It's not a a firm liquid it's a it's a gelatin which is exactly what i want all right i uh pontificate so i will bring you around when i'm ready to uh, show you the stock see you around the corner okay guys i'm back uh that's 98.2 percent of uh of the fat off of there now um can you see that jiggling going on Oh my goodness, this stock has so much body. Look at that. Oh my. Woo! I am excited to use this. I am excited how this turned out. It's, it doesn't take much to get me excited, does it? But man, look at the look at the body on that. Just bloop, bloop, bloop. Love it. So I will uh, package this up. Now listen, uh, if you want, if you're doing long-term storage for this. Uh, certainly, uh, a lot of times I'll put them in deli tainers and put them in the freezer. But if you have a limited freezer space, I mean, that becomes an issue. So you can, okay, can, can, you can can your stock. Now, I, uh, I don't have a stainless steel pressure cooker to do on these induction tops. Uh, but I'm going to probably get one and do a pressure canning video for you. But in the meantime, my friend Chef Brian recently did his chicken stock video and it includes pressure canning uh the uh, stock so i'm going to include the link to that video down in the description so go check out chef brian and toward the latter third of it somewhere in there he does the pressure canning uh on on his chicken stock which is a great way to make it shelf stable and you can just pull it off the shelf and use it so oh that was a mistake wasn't it I hope you can hear that gloop, gloop, gloop. Oh, what a mess I'm making. And it's not going to all fit in here. Huh? I am so happy with uh, with the gelatin content in this. That just makes, when you use the stock, it just makes it silky, kind of uh, really a nice texture. So I've got a little bit left in here. That'll fill up a quart size uh, deli tainer. And I'm going to clean up my mess. But guys, that's how you make chicken stock. So I hope you've uh, enjoyed the video. Go make some chicken stock of your own. You won't regret it. You will elevate your uh, get hook. It's easy for you to say. You'll elevate your cooking game at home by doing this. It doesn't have any salt in it. You always season the final dish. You don't have any of the preservatives or other nonsense you get uh, when you uh, buy that stuff at the grocery store. So make your own. Remember, a day in the kitchen beats a day of working any day. And I'll see you next time on the Chef Lance Show.